everybody. I'm Ashley Fields with Yoder to Us. Today is a Wednesday. I think it's March 10th, 2021. It is March 10th. How is everybody doing? It is a beautiful uh, sunny day here. Nice and warm out. We're in like the 80 degrees today. So I see this thing keeps sliding down. Hold on y'all. I don't know why, but my mount, my mount is not wanting to cooperate with me so well today. Hello, hello, as you hop in, say hello. I am, we're gonna be doing our gnome, sweet gnome truck today. Uh, so obviously this one on top is gonna be the finished look. So, give me just a second, I'm gonna get my stuff together and we're gonna really just hop in and get started. Uh, this blank is available at yardarrest.com as well as uh, all of the paint colors that I'll be using, we also sell at the store. Hey Debbie, how are you doing? Hey Carla. Y'all, I love, I love, love, love this pattern. I think this is a Terry Burton pattern with uh, Robin's Nest. Um, she does the, the cutest work and she has really cute patterns. So uh, this one is one of hers. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my finished one uh, out of the way. And we're gonna just hop on in and get started. Um, Typically, I, you know, like this has lettering on it. So typically I would do some of that before the live. However, I can't do that, or I couldn't do that before the live because I have, I have to get my dry brushing down on here. So, hey Pam, how are you doing, honey? Okay, y'all, I had, I started out with two coats of white. On top of that white, I came in with just light yellow on my truck. Obviously, I got black on my wheels. Um, on the gnome, the hat I did in seafoam green. The mushroom I did in coral. And then we're gonna have a couple of flowers here. We got light purple and sky blue with some lime green. So this one doesn't have a whole ton of colors, uh, but this really, I, I feel like all these colors really complement each other once we get it done. Hello, my dear, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? It is a, such a beautiful day outside. I'm loving it. Just absolutely gorgeous. And plus, it's nice to also get to be in shorts again. All right, y'all. Uh, obviously, this is just an old plate. It doesn't really matter. I just need somewhere to put, uh, to do my dry brushing, to get my paint kind of ready for that. All right, I'm starting out with just some of that shading yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. I might have, oops, I definitely put too much water. Whoopsie. That happens. Um... Let's see, what, what has everybody been up to, y'all? I have been, uh, we are gonna be starting paint parties very, very soon at the store. And so, in case if anybody didn't know, when it comes to the paint that we sell, I'm the one who bottles it all and, uh, here at my house. And then I basically take it all to the store. Well, since we are now gonna be doing those paint parties, I've had to start, um, Kind of getting all of that bottling supplies ready to go to the store that way we have everything there and so i've been like filling jugs and uh squirt bottles and all sorts of stuff and i'm going to the store tomorrow to start delivering all of these things that we're going to be needing for these paint parties coming up and so i'm just getting super excited about it been really busy i've got like a whole truckload of stuff i've got to be taking to the store tomorrow i already called my husband uh, a little earlier, I said, I'm going to have to take your truck because there's no way I can get all of this in my little Telluride. Uh, but I'm just super excited, y'all. I cannot wait uh, to start doing paint parties. How fun is that going to be? Hey, Kathy, how are you? Hey, Selma, so glad you're here. Y'all, as y'all can see, can y'all see the light flickering? So this is a Amazon special over here. We uh, bought like a case of these canister lights on Amazon and uh, got them installed and they flicker really bad. We've had uh, two different electricians come out just to look at it to make sure it's not like faulty wiring or anything like that. And no, apparently it's just, uh, I don't know, cheap lights. So forgive me, they are flickering. They drive me nuts. Uh, that's just kind of how it goes. All right, y'all, I'm just doing a little bit of dry brushing. Obviously, I've got that yellow as my base, the light yellow. 
So I'm just using a little bit of shading yellow. Obviously this has a lot of water added to it. And that is just so I can get these kind of light wispy uh, strokes out of it. Also on top of all of this, we are going to um, add shading and add some white to it too. So it's really gonna come together. Uh, Zama says, I'm at work again. Yes, so fun, I'm at work too. I'm just so blessed I get to work from home. I love it, you know, best job ever. Uh, but I do remember having to be in the professional world and like every day my husband gets up at 4.30 and we live in Conroe, uh, those of you that are local, we live in Conroe and he drives to Katy to go to work. And he's at work by 6 a.m. And y'all, every day when he gets up and goes to work, I, I lift my head up and kiss him goodbye and I'm right back to sleep. So it's kind of, you know, it's nice getting to work for yourself because you can, you can make schedules. You can get a little bit more sleep when you want to. And like I personally, I sleep in a little bit more in the morning and then I'll stay up later at night. Uh, my husband's total opposite. He gets up early and he goes to bed early. Uh, but for me and my, you know, doing the painting thing and all that, it's, it's good that I'm kind of like that because you know how many late nights I end up having and it just works out for me. So. I'm going to just get this a little bit dry. I honestly want to, I want to get this truck uh, or the yellow part of the truck as, as done as possible before I start working on um, the gnome and the mushroom and the flowers because I need all of this to dry so I can come in and do um, do my letters. So now that we got a little bit of that shading yellow, we're gonna do the same dry brushing again, just with white. Uh, it's kind of like, think of think of that, anytime I do dry brushing, I always do two colors, right? Because, woo uh, it ends up kind of being your highlighter. So I'm just getting me a little bit of white paint on here. I just, this paint was really separated and it had a lot of that uh, kind of separation liquid came out on here. So I, I don't know that I'm I even gonna have, I don't think I have to add any more water to it just cause it kind of worked out for me. All right, notice on the dry brushing guys, I, I know you guys have seen me do it. I love dry brushing. I almost, I do it at any opportunity I can just because I feel like it's so simple. It's easy and it can really just make a piece pop. And so um, whenever I am doing this, like right now I'm using a two inch chip brush, but you could totally use any size brush. Obviously I'm making a big mess on my wheels, guys. I don't care about that. I'm gonna paint back over it anyways. Um, if I were not doing this on a live and I was actually just painting this truck uh, to sell or painting it for myself, I wouldn't have even put any paint on the wheels until I got my, um, my dry brushing done because it does it, it can get messy on other parts okay so there's what we got so far I know that lighting looks terrible uh, but that's just shading yellow and some white dry brushing hi Jaylene hi Victoria how are you guys Joy, I said I think I said Jaylene jo Joylene Joylene hopefully I'm saying that right uh, she says I love dry brushing also yes y'all it's it it's the fastest easiest way to make it look like you spent a ton of time on it, you know, but really it's quick. So it's always a nice thing. All right, now dry brushing is done. We're gonna go ahead and move into shading. Um, just as I used in dry brushing, my shading yellow, I'm gonna use that same shading yellow around my perimeter to get some shading on here. So mine is just really separated. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's kind of nasty. Make sure that's dry before I stick it in here because it's obviously a different color. Uh, so let me just get this mixed up. Anytime I'm shading, guys, I always have water added to my paint. Same thing with outlining. Again, I always have water added to my paint. The point of that for me is to get my brush to glide and have long, smooth strokes. Without having water added to that, I don't always get that. So I'm trying to get the consistency to get really long, fluid strokes. Yes, jo Joylene. I love it. I love it. I love it. We're so glad you guys are here today. I have been, um, I have just been like a, a busy lady over here, y'all. I'm already working on uh, patterns for like Christmas and stuff like that, like blank patterns for Christmas as well as 
you know, just trying to come up with some new Christmas patterns. But I don't know about you guys, but I really, I get tired. Whoa, that was not my line. I started to go way low when my line was way high. Uh, but I do get really tired of like, uh, you know, always doing the same thing. And so I've been trying to kind of um, find some new projects for us. And I've also got Victoria working on some really cute stuff I think you guys are going to like as well. I cannot wait to show everything to y'all here in a few months. All right, y'all. Oh, by the way, I am using a number 16 uh, Royal Gold flat tip brush. We call it a shader, but it's a flat, a flat brush. Obviously, I'm just kind of taking that paint around my perimeter and just adding a little bit of shading. I'm trying to see these lines. I'm not even that old, but I don't have the best eyes. And uh, sometimes they really fool me. Okay, I'm trying to think. I gotta look at my samples sometimes because I actually came about a couple of weeks ago and I end up forgetting how I do certain stuff. So hi Lisa, how are you doing, babe? Did anybody that's on here get a chance to uh, watch Jackie Watson last night? How fun was that tutorial? I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. She did such a good job. I just love, I love getting the opportunity to watch other people paint and to really learn as well. Cause I've been painting a long time, but I don't mean, you know, uh, that my way is the only way, obviously. I learn a lot from watching other people as well. And I just really enjoyed it. Her end product was absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Almost done on here. I'm trying to make sure I stay in that frame. I was trying to turn the camera like facing down, like only facing the table where you guys couldn't even see me. Um, and it just wasn't wasn't quite working out. But this pattern is a little bit wider. I want to say this pattern is 32 inches wide and 23 tall. Just make sure I didn't miss anything. Actually, this line stops right here, but I'm going to pull it all the way down. That's just what I want to do. Okay. So there is a look at that shading yellow on here. I know that lighting is funky, uh, but it looks better in person. So let's see. Uh, Zelma said she got to, oh y'all, I'm getting paint on my face. Zelma uh, said, I did and I loved it. Uh, Pam got to watch and really enjoyed it. Debbie watched, it was gorgeous. Kathy got to watch, loved that project. Yes, y'all, it was so fun. Not only that, she has the cutest voice. I just, I could listen to Miss Jackie talk all day. Okay, now I am gonna go ahead and uh, blow dry this because like I said, I'm gonna have to do words on here and I really need this truck to be as dry as possible once I get to doing those words. So in order to do that, I'm gonna try to just finish out the truck before doing uh, everything else on here. Hey Paula, how are you? end up having to wait on this a few minutes because it is it's really wet and my blow dryer is pushing that paint all over the place. We'll see how far we can get. Bear with me. 
I know sitting and listening to a blow dryer is not the funnest. Um, but I really needed to dry. Got one of my hairs stuck on here. Y'all, I was, um, I washed my hair this morning and, um, I don't, a couple hours ago, I went looking for my straightener to straighten my hair. I was I couldn't find it in my bathroom. I went to my daughter's bathroom thinking maybe she took it. Couldn't find it. Came out here. Sometimes I straighten my hair out here. Uh, I, could, I just literally could not find it. After about 20 minutes, I texted my husband. I was like, have you seen my straightener? And he's like, oh yeah, I took it to straighten my beard. I was like, what? Who would have ever thought that, that my husband would know where my straightener was? He actually took it. <laughs> so uh, my hair, I had already brushed it out and I have really like curly wavy hair and I let it air dry and then I brushed it out and it's this huge, huge poop ball that I was going to go straighten. But then uh, since I had brushed it, it's a big poop ball and I didn't have a straightener, I was like, okay, well, braids it is. I kind of feel a little silly with them, but uh, I have been... I, have, I wear my hair up almost every day and I have like my hair keeps breaking and every time I go and see my hairdresser I'm like why is my hair always breaking and, and coming falling out she's like if you wear it in a ponytail every day I said yes and she's like stop doing that so she's been encouraging me to try to do uh, twists or braids and just using a ponytail at the, just at the very end of my hair to try to help with breakage so I feel like I look silly but working. Uh, Lupe says, don't change a thing. We like seeing your face while you paint. Oh, you are so sweet. Okay, y'all. I think we're good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and get this outlined. Now, um, I used shading orange. So, let me show you what the, the difference in these are. So, shading yellow is what I shaded it with. Here's the color, that shading orange that I'm gonna be using on the perimeter. If you didn't quite care for shading orange, another color you could use is red orange, uh, but to me, I like the shading orange. So that's what I'm gonna be using on uh, the perimeter of my truck. Let me see. I've also been breaking in new script liners. So I've been going between four different new script liners, just trying to kind of, you know, get them where I want them. And one of them keeps doing the V number on me where it splits out. And I'm hoping it's not this one because that, that drives me nuts. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. You get a brush you love, you finally get it worked in. Oh, wow. Just got paint in my face. Uh, but you finally get your brush broken in and then, um, Okay, well, hopefully I got all that off. I don't really know. Uh, and then it starts to like mess up on you. I'm really hoping uh, that it'll work with me today, but who knows? All right, I'm just getting some more of that shading orange in my cup. I always put it in the cup because I do add water. And so instead of watering down my entire container of paint, I just use the little two ounce cup and water down the paint in that two ounce cup. All right. Now I'm gonna start here with the, uh, the little window I have. I uh, just take it from me. I did do this window black whenever I was working on my sample and it looked atrocious, did not look good. And so I had to go back and paint over the black with white and then come back over the white with the shading orange. So stick with the shading orange because the black did not look so great, y'all. Basically at this point, I'm really just following those lines that are already etched on here as well as doing a perimeter shading. And I don't know why, my hand is shaking, but I don't have, I wasn't really feeling anxious today because I do deal with anxiety unfortunately um, and a lot of times it it kind of gets a hold of me uh, but I've been feeling good and I don't know why my hand is just kind of I don't know if y'all ever feel like that too you just can't get the straightest movements out of your brush drives me nuts
rest of this truck, obviously, as soon as I get this um, outline done on here, I'm going to start working on everything else. Typically, I would outline at the end, obviously, uh, but for the sake of needing to be able to do my words, I had to, I got to do it a little bit earlier today. something uh, new that happened in our household last week. We acquired a new snake. And I've never had a snake before. Snakes were never my thing. But my husband's been wanting one. Uh, we had the bright idea to go to a reptile show a couple of, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. And so ever since then, my husband has been uh, wanting a snake. So he ordered a snake that came in the mail. Did you know you can order snakes that, you know, they'll uh, deliver it to your local FedEx or UPS and you go pick it up. And so we are now the proud owners of a new snake. Her name is Ruby. And I have to say, she's really, really cute. I never thought I would ever say that regarding a snake. But she's adorable. Now, I don't watch feedings because that, no thank you. Like, that's just... Nope, you know, not about that. I don't want to see an animal eating another animal. Just not something I can really stomach, you know. Uh, but I also never thought I would use the word snake and cute in the same sentence. But she's so tiny, y'all. She's, I don't know, she's maybe uh, about this long. And then she's like maybe the width of a pen. She's really, uh, really thin and, and long. And she's just precious. <laughs> Debbie, nope, nope, nope. You know what? I I've always said that. But you know the one thing I can honestly say, no, 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 no? That's spiders. I don't do spiders in any sense, any form. And the same thing with roaches. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Lupe, no way. <laughs> I know, y'all. I said the same thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of enjoying her. She's, she's a shop snake, so she stays out here. She's not in our house. But we also have three dogs and two cats, so we really have plenty um, of animals in the house. The last thing I need is another one, you know. All right, y'all, uh, we're gonna let this dry a little bit. I might just hit this right here so I don't mess it up while I'm working at my top. Uh, I might even try to just hit it over top of some of these words, that way when we finish up here, uh, we can go ahead and go right into the words. Just give it, let me dry it for like 15, 20 seconds over here, and then uh, we'll start working up top. Everybody's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I see there's a lot of people in here that also don't like snakes. You know, and I told my husband, I said, if she wasn't in a cage, I would not be about that life, you know. But she's in a cage, and I don't know. She's kind of cute, I have to say. All right, y'all. Let me see. Do, 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 do. I'm just trying to think. Uh, hmm. I'm going to think I'm going to actually grab um, my round tip or yeah, round tip brush. This is a number eight round. It is something touch. Masty's touch. Fine Art Studio. I know I got it at um, Hobby Lobby. Knowing me, it wasn't any more than 10 bucks, probably even closer to five, something like that. Uh, but I'm just gonna use this brush to uh, do a little bit on this beard. I'm gonna get some light gray, if I can find it. Light gray. And we're just gonna, I don't know if anybody, uh, or those of you who did see the, um, the uh, Peace Gnome tutorial, I think it was last week, uh, then you saw the beard that I did and I did use the same brush. I'm kind of going to do that same thing on here, uh, just kind of create some, some lines kind of uh, coming down with my uh, round tip. 
really I'm just uh, loading just the tip of my brush. This brush is a great brush um, if you want to do like really thick lines and, and make them do skinny as well. So if I'm barely touching down, it's skinny. If I put pressure, it becomes fat. So I can make it a skinny line, I can make it a fat line, I can make it a skinny line. You know, that's kind of the nice part about this brush. So I'm basically just gonna kind of start right here at the nose. And I might need to add a little water, y'all. I can already tell that paint's a little thick, a little thicker than what I'm really needing it to be. Also, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I'm curious if maybe this paint uh, in particular got frozen or something. It's just like, um, it's very gummy. In a really weird way. I like to kind of start in the middle so it kind of gives me a direction of where I'm going from there, right? So like on the inside, I'll kind of just come in. And here's the great thing about this. There is no right or wrong. You add as many lines or as few lines as you want. You know, there's there's no, uh, oh, 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 I've got some orange in here. There is no uh, perfect way of really doing this. I don't even, where did that orange, oh, I must have came off of my truck. I'm gonna get this in here and just let it start drying. I am gonna come back in here with some black on a script liner and just add a little bit more, you know, depth and dimension here. Now, let me see. I could always also come in here and just add a few light strokes if I feel like, you know, maybe I have some wide spots. Kind of whatever you like, less or more, totally up to you on there. That's just kind of going to be the start for us. And move this out of my way. Move that out of my way. And now let's get let's to get to working on our mushroom and our hat. Okay, so I am going to get a, a shader. Let me see. That one's a little thick. Y'all, I have like 10 different shaders, and each one is just a little bit different in size. Some of them have like short bristles like this. Uh, some of them have, you know, longer bristles. And so I just have to kind of sit sometimes and look at them and decide which one I'm going to use because really they're going to give me a different kind of thickness on my line. And so I'm always trying to really pay attention to that and be cognizant of it. So I try to go with a smaller brush, especially one that doesn't have long bristles, if I'm trying to just do a very, very small area. So I'm gonna just do my nose right quick. Uh, this is a number 12 Royal Gold. I know we have had these in the store in the past and sold them. I don't know if this size in particular is in stock or not. a little teeny tiny bit not trying to do a whole lot on there okay uh, I'm gonna wash this brush out and just keep using it because I can make this brush give me really really thin lines like that or I can make it give me thicker lines if I actually fill in the full brush I only filled in the corner on that one clean that brush back out Move this all right now my mushroom I did in coral um, you can obviously pick any color you want, uh, but coral is what I use. And I'm going to use some of that shading orange uh, to shade my mushroom. This is the same brush I just used on the nose. So it's still that number 12. something a few weeks ago just gonna kind of leave it light um, also by the way when you have a coral as a base 
or even like light orange and you're doing shading orange on top when that shading orange first goes on there it looks kind of weird once it dries it'll dry a little bit darker and you'll like it better so if you're first looking at it and you're like oh i'm not so sure let it dry it'll definitely look a little better hi galen how are you i would love this on my door yes hey mom okay let me see all right wash that brush back out again and then we are going to shade our um our hat trying to get some of that excess water out of that brush okay now the hat is seafoam green so I'm gonna actually use a teal uh, on my seafoam that is separated and really really nasty get that mixed up all right Again, I'm still using the same brush. This is still that number 12 um, Royal Shader, Royal Flat Brush. I should really say. I just picked up a little bit of orange. Didn't mean to do that, so I'm kind of going to wipe that out and get a little more. Now I'm just going to kind of take my brush and just kind of, just a little bit. Not a whole lot. I know this angle is kind of weird. This truck's kind of long. All right. Now, uh, let me see. I just need to work now on my flowers. And also, I have a little teeny, teeny, tiny. Oh, gosh, y'all just, I just got scared. I saw somebody walking outside of my glass doors. Uh, but it's just Tony. He's the, he's the guy that works for me. He's usually on this side of the shop, and he was walking on that side, and it kind of freaked me out for a second. Like, who is that? Okay, uh, right quick, I have this little gray um, bumper. I'm just going to grab my rake brush, y'all. Uh, if you don't have one of these, these are really, really great to have. Notice the end. It looks like a rake, which is why it's actually called a rake brush. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. I want to say it was like eight bucks, something like that. Uh, when it comes to brushes, I'll be honest with you guys, I will spend a ton of money on mop, good mop brushes. Uh, but when it comes to like shaders and stuff like that, I typically don't spend more than maybe 10 bucks on the high end, unless I find something I really, really like. So I kind of stick with things that to me are more affordable. Now my mop brushes, y'all, I've Oh, those can be expensive. And I definitely have some brushes that I've spent 30 or $40 on that I've, you know, used for years and years and years. But for the most part, the, you know, the kind of middle rack ones are just fine. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, Donna. How are you? Hi, May. Selma says, I love my uh, rake brush. I have two. Yes, girl. All right. Now, I'm going to just use this lid, okay? I just kind of stirred that up a little bit. I'm just gonna dip the tip of that brush. I'm not bringing it all the way up. Notice I'm just keeping it on the ends. I'm gonna take my lid and kind of just fan it out. I don't want much on here. Obviously, I really have a small surface area right here. I'm just gonna kind of add just a little bit. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, now let's work on our flowers and leaf. Let me move this. Move some of my stuff out of the way, y'all. I've got just too much junk. I'm gonna move my water and my iPad over here so that I can straighten this truck out just a little bit better for you guys. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go back and grab that script liner uh, Royal Gold Script Liner number four, and um, I got sky blue and I have purple uh, flowers here. So I'm just using script liner. I'm not using anything bigger than that. So on my sky blue, I'm coming in with a little bit of teal. So the same color that I used on my seafoam green, I'm also using on my sky blue. Hi, Kathy. Kathy says, uh, did you add black to that gray? This is not, I did not add black to this gray, Kathy. This is just regular. I think it's gray number 24. You could even do a gray beard, that undertone gray, or use this gray as the full beard, 
and then do white over top with that gray mixed with a little bit of black if you really wanted a lot more dimension into your beard. I really love the way that that looked on the um, on the uh, piece dome. So, all right, I'm loading that brush and then really just offloading the brush. And you're just gonna kinda come around and do a bunch of like C's. I know right now it might look kinda silly. But you're gonna do that same thing with white and black as well. And so it'll really end up coming together and popping. So just open C's or like commas with your shading color. So that base of that flower is sky blue. I used a little bit of teal, washing that brush. I'm gonna get my uh, shading purple because I got light purple as the base. Load my brush, script liner again, offload my brush. I didn't quite have enough on here. my my start all right now on my leaves y'all these leaves are tiny they might be an inch tall maybe an inch and a half wide you don't have much space there so I just do straight um, straight outline on that uh, since I need to um, outline my flowers I'm gonna wait on my leaves and then we'll just do it last because otherwise the black is going to really come into there and I, I don't want to mess with that yet. All right, so uh, right now we just got our shading done. I think the next thing I really need to do is just blow dry here for a second so we can try to finish this part out and get to working on our words. Uh, oh, did I add any black to the gray on the fender? Sorry, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That gray I used, uh, it is a little bit, it does have a little bit of black use in, in it. Does anytime you guys see me having um, two different grays, it's always going to be our regular set gray that we have, that we carry, and then uh, the same gray with some black added to it. Sorry, Kathy, I didn't understand you earlier. I wasn't thinking about that. because I made a I made a really big mess on those wheels but no worries I'll just clean them up with my script liner y'all it's painting we always are making messes around here all right now I'm gonna switch over to black and just kind of start getting things tidied up over here Notice I am trying to keep uh, keep my lines on like a thinner side. These are uh, these flowers are very small, so I really don't want to you know overpower them too much. Boop. All right, now. Um, did outline the black okay never mind I'm gonna just outline the black on here and then we'll come back in and fill in we'll fill in the center part of our leaves uh, with the dark green okay now uh, same thing I did on uh, the inside of my flowers with my my shading colors I'm just doing that same thing with black I'm not necessarily going over top of any of those colors I'm just kind of following around in that same kind of way y'all I don't know why but it, I just don't think this is coming out near as cute as the one I did on my sample why does that happen to us it's like some days that technique works really well you know and others 
It just doesn't. I don't know why. Oh well. We're going to keep on moving. So, all right. Now I'm just going to uh, get this mushroom outline just a little bit. That's getting a little thin. I was just trying to kind of thicken out that line a little bit. This is a newer brush, and newer brushes, they definitely don't fan out as wide as some of your older brushes, but that's kind of what I wanted on this. Now I'm going to just do my hat. around so I can see it. Move all my stuff over. Now on the beard, you know, I use the, um, the round brush to kind of do that gray. I am gonna obviously be using my script liner now. And I'm kind of just gonna come in over top and just bring in some very light lines. I don't know why, but I am just not having the uh, most steady hand today. So some of these lines are looking a little funky, but that's okay. I'm not trying to stay in any particular way, like on top of that gray or, you know, like line for line. I'm really just adding a little black. Anywhere my paintbrush ends up taking me is where it's going to go. Now, I did not, I did not do, um, I did not do like a perimeter or anything around the beard. I kind of just left it open at the bottom. Only thing I need to do up here is uh, fill in my leaf, add white, and then really when this all dries, I'm going to uh, come back around that nose with that shading flush on a script liner. Um, I'm also thinking, I'm going to stop with the black for right now. I need to clean up these tires, uh, but I'm afraid if I go do that right now, then I'm going to end up dragging that. So let me work on the words, and then we're going to kind of come back and finish out all the other little stragglers uh, parts that I need to finish up. Clean that brush out, and I'm going to go, I used teal on these words, y'all. Uh, this teal does have some water added into it. Uh, start by adding a little bit and put your brush down and uh, you know if you're getting good strokes and it's gliding really well then you're good if you are um, your brush isn't taking you very far and your strokes are kind of choppy then try to add a little bit more water it really makes a difference when you are working with your script liner and definitely when you're doing lettering I just love, love, love this teal on top of yellow. I just think it's so cute. It complements and contrasts really well. Also, y'all, when I'm working on letters, like for instance, on our blanks, you have these words etched onto the pattern for you. So you don't have to worry about tracing or grabbing, you know, getting out graphite paper and all that sort of stuff. Um, there, it's literally right there. Now, at the same token of that, whenever you're doing lettering, if you are going a little bit outside of that line, don't worry about it. In fact, if you look at my stuff or Mary's stuff up close, we definitely don't stay in those lines perfectly, y'all. We just make it look like we did, you know, a great job. But it's not, if you really look up close, 
honestly, I totally go outside the lines all the time. So if you're somebody who has been, you know, struggling with painting uh, letters, just kind of let your brush flow a little bit. And if it's not perfect, that's fine. No worries. It's hand painted. It's not supposed to be perfect. Y'all, I'm apologizing in advance because y'all know whenever I start doing script liner work, especially doing letters, I uh, tend to get a little bit quieter. I just have to kind of focus just a little bit more. I really feel like um, whenever I'm face coating and priming and, you know, even shading, um, it doesn't really require much thought to me. Uh, but, you know, whenever I'm really working with a script liner, I definitely got to be paying a little bit more attention, you know. Oh. Okay, well, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. <laughs> Y'all, we are already, uh, I've already got, Tony's here today. He's a guy that uh, cuts for me. And um, we already are cutting out Christmas stuff for me to paint, to sell for, you know, 2021 Christmas. It's crazy, but I can't tell you how fast every year seems to always go by. And then fall gets here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough stuff. I've been so behind. So last year I was really behind and I told myself, not this year, I've got to start working on stuff early. So I'm going to be doing some uh, painted trucks and different signs that say like, uh, I, this sign that has like arrows that'll say like North Pole and Toy Shop and something else, I don't know. But I'm excited. Something about painting Christmas, it just gets me in such a happy mood. We're almost there, y'all. Now I feel like I'm taking forever. One more word to go, y'all. Uh, Mary says, does it help if you sing when you make up, when you make a boo-boo? Yes. <laughs> uh, Lupe says, maybe Christmas elves, whimsical. Uh, Lupe, we have so many uh, new uh, designs that we are already working on for Christmas blanks for this year. And elves are on that list, I think. I don't know for sure, but we were talking about three different uh, boy and girl versions. So like three of each. I don't know if that's still the case, because honestly there's, if I'm being really honest with you guys, I talk to my mom almost every day. We, uh, we usually talk first thing in the morning. And uh, obviously when, when you would work together, you talk a lot. And so uh, we, every morning, you know, we sit down and we kind of have a game plan set out. We're working on whatever we got to work on at that moment. And so talking about patterns is something we obviously do uh, very frequently. But um, I can't tell y'all how much work it takes from the moment we talk about it to actually getting it done. 
So I don't want to make any promises, but I know we've spoken about doing several different um, elf ones. Okay, so three girls and three boys. All right, cool. Uh, thank you for backing me up on that. Because, you know, I start saying something out loud, and I'm like, wait, I don't, I mean, we talked about it, but I don't know if that was a for sure thing. And I don't want to get in trouble for telling everybody something that, you know, isn't going to be true. I've also, uh, Victoria's been drawing up some, like, kind of totem poles of, uh, you know, themed stuff that all is kind of stacked up on top of each other. And she sent me a couple of designs earlier, and they are just so stinking cute, y'all. I cannot wait to show y'all. Y'all are going to love it. When these letters dry, the only other thing I, I did do on these is do a white highlight. Um, I don't like to try to do the highlight while it's wet. I know some people do, some people don't. It's just a preference. Uh, but me, I personally like it to be dry. So that's probably the only thing I can't or won't be able to do today because these letters are just so wet that if I even tried to blow dry the letters, it's going to send that paint all over the place. And then I would be really upset if it messed up, you know, my piece. I feel like the finish line is, is, is near. Okay. Let me clean this brush out. Let me put my lid on here and get, show you guys so far. There is Gnome Sweet Gnome. All right, now let's come back in with our, uh, our script liner and let's finish up everything that we've been waiting on. Uh, let's see, Mary says, and I left enough room. Okay, so six elves, three boys, three girls, one elf with a stocking, one with a present, uh, one with an ornament, and that's so each of those uh, choices you'll have in a boy, girl, a boy version and a girl version. And then she says she also left enough room on the present ornament and stocking where you could write a name and personalize the elf if you wanted to. So uh, obviously we don't do Christmas until uh, July is when we start releasing Christmas patterns. But it is something that we're already working on behind the scenes just to try to get ourselves prepped. Um, and not only that, you know, we want to be able to bring you guys some new stuff that we didn't do last year. I'm sure there will probably be a few things coming back this year. Uh, you know, things like stockings and Christmas tree and that sort of thing. Like, well, I'm sure, excuse me, we'll probably have that every year. Uh, but especially those of you that were a customer um, of ours last summer, obviously you guys are going to be wanting new things that you didn't get last year. I'm just super excited about it. I think you guys are going to love it. Hi, Deborah. How are you doing, babe? All right, y'all. I'm really just kind of touching up those wheels right now because that dry brushing got all over them. So I'm really just kind of cleaning up my lines here just a little bit. Um, if you are working on this, um, you know, and you're painting this, anytime you're doing anything with dry brush, I encourage you to do the, do the dry brush first and then come back in and start uh, base coating all your other parts. Because that dry brushing does tend to make a bit of a mess everywhere. So, all right, now, what did I need to do with black up here? I don't think I needed anything with black up here. Now I'm gonna clean out my black. And we're gonna switch and get a little bit of uh, dark green and do just the center here of our leaf. It's obviously a super, super small area. You don't have a lot of space. So I did not do any shading. There's really not enough space for that. What I am going to do is uh, I'm basically loading my brush and then offloading my brush. I need that to be as thin as possible. And I'm just going to kind of come in here. Oh, that's still a little thick. And just kind of fan it out. I'm 
not a lot of room, you can't do too, too much. So, all right, now we just need to get some uh, white on here. And then I did do some yellow polka dots on my mushroom. Uh, for the polka dots, I used, again, my script liner. I didn't use anything, you know, too fancy. This is just regular light yellow. In fact, actually, this one has some white added to it. So it's a little bit of a lighter yellow. Just kind of load my brush. Notice how fat my brush is right now because it's got a lot of paint in there. I kind of load it and get a lot on there and then just, you know, kind of start moving on. And uh, these polka dots, if you will, will really be very raised. And then also when they dry, I'm sure they'll flatten out just a little bit too. But I just kind of kept them small. You could always do uh, foam pouncers if, you know, if you wanted to. I am all about not having to wash as many, you know, brushes or too many brushes that sort of thing so you know be doing something easy for me and just use, reusing that same brush I've already been using that's kind of what I prefer to do all right now I'm going to pick up uh, my white and let's add a little bit of highlights and then this guy will be done 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 let me actually clean up let me blow dry this i just want to clean up that nose it just doesn't look finished right now you know it kind of looks like it needs a little little touch up i'm getting that shading pink again and just using my script liner to just kind of uh outline it and just clean up clean up my little circle now I can get my white just washing out that brush switch over to my white y'all this white does have uh, water added to it but I am not liking this flower near as much as I like it on my sample. Y'all ever do that where you paint something one time and you're like, oh, I love it. And then you try to go recreate it and it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. It's kind of how I'm feeling about this at the moment. I feel like it's just meh, meh. I'm just going to take a little bit there at the bottom of my leaf. Do a little bit here in my nose. Bring some in on my hat. Then same thing down here and up here. And then, uh, let me see. Uh, obviously, y'all, my letters need some white on there, but I need to wait for my uh, letters to dry. Uh, let's see. Uh, Deborah says, hey, Ashley, looking good. I'm late. Thank you so much, Deborah. Uh, we're glad you're here. No worries if you're late. Carla says, I love it. Thank you, Carla. Hi, Sherry. How are you doing, babe? Okay, y'all, uh, my wheels are super duper wet, so this probably ain't going to look that great. Uh, but I am going to come in here and just do a little bit of white. Um, whenever I'm doing my white, I almost try to, I, I do opposite sides of my wheel, but I almost try to do like, top down just a little bit Let's see I got a bunch of black on here and then I kind of almost do from the middle downward so that they're almost like opposites but not just not perfect I don't like the perfect look I kind of like it Ugh. this is just so wet so it's coming out gray y'all get y'all kind of you know get the picture here okay I think I am going to just take this and just do a little bit on the bumper. I didn't even outline the bumper. The bumper is just so small. I kind of just left it. But let me show you guys what we got. This is it for me. Other than you do need white highlights on your letters. You need white highlights on your letters. 
but I can't do that right now because it's just too wet. But let me show you guys. You're a gnome, sweet gnome. All right. I started with a uh, light yellow as the uh, base of my truck. Actually, let me let me take a step back. I actually started with two coats of white uh, as my base before I did anything. On top of that white, I used a light yellow for the truck. I used coral for my mushroom, seafoam green on the gnome hat. Uh, my flowers, I've got sky blue and purple, and then my leaves are done in uh, lime green. Uh, I then came in on my truck and I did uh, shading, shading yellow and white dry brushing. I also did shading yellow um, shading on my truck, and then I outlined my truck with shading orange. Uh, my letters are done in a teal, and then the shading on my hat is done in teal. And then the uh, teal, there, I'm also using a little bit of teal with a script liner inside of uh, this rose. My coral, I used a shading orange on inside of my coral. My purple, I've got a little bit of shading purple in there. My lime green, I've got a little bit of dark green. And then we just did a little bit of gray on here. And I used a rake brush and added a little bit of black to my gray. I call it a shading gray, but it's just hand mixed by me. We don't sell it. Uh, but just did a little bit of a rake brush over top of that. Let me show you guys. The only thing I'm missing and I'm lacking on this one is the white highlights over top of those letters. So all you do on that is use your script liner and just come in with a little bit of white. I obviously prefer my letters to be dry whenever I am adding that white, which is the only reason I did not add the white yet uh, to the sample we just did. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope y'all like it. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh! Y'all, I made a boo-boo. I gotta, I gotta clean up now. Uh, I know this guy's available in store. It is $35. He is, uh, I'm just going to make a bigger mess now. He is uh, 23 inches tall and uh, 30 inches wide. I hope you guys will give it a try because it is so, so cute. I'm just going to attempt to kind of clean up some of my mess right here, but I obviously knocked it with the finished piece. And it happens, and uh, I'm going to just kind of clean up what I can, and then the rest I'm going to let dry, and I'll have to just touch it up when it's dry. I don't know if you guys have ever made boo-boos before, but it gets a little bit easier to actually fix it once it's dry and then you can just repaint over top. So thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Thank y'all for being here. I think I got all the questions. Um, obviously, if you've got any more questions, uh, obviously uh, put them in the comments and I'll make sure and answer them as soon as I can. Until next time, everybody, I will see you guys later. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week. Um, I will be at the store tomorrow getting... Um, a lot of paint supplies brought down to the store so we can start getting ready for paint parties as well as I know I'm going to have plain peeps um, tomorrow in, in store as well as those small $5 plain Easter eggs. I've got some more of those cut. So if you anybody's waiting on those two blanks, they'll be at the store tomorrow. But other than that, thank you all for hanging out with me, guys. Everybody enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.